Ja Morant is the most recent addition to the list of NBA's wannabe gangsters. And if you're a real NBA fan, you might know all these players who allegedly have gang ties. Or you have seen some of them throwing what seem to be gang signs in the actual NBA game or after it. But none of them can compare to this guy. Remember him? He's 6'11", 307 pounds Montenegrin bulldozer Nikola Pekovic. And he just might be the biggest gangster in NBA history. Stick around until the end of the video to find out all the basketball and non-basketball related reasons for this title. Of course you could probably ask, how can this guy be gangster? Nikola Pekovic. Looking at these clips, he just seems yet another friendly, charismatic and funny guy from the Balkans. Even him saying he killed someone sounded chilled and relaxed. The guy's been killed. <laughs> it's game over. <laughs> Some of his teammates described him as a big teddy bear off the court, but at the same time, he scared the hell out of other players. First, let's rewind it back a little. Peck was drafted 31st overall in the 2008 draft by the Minnesota Timberwolves, but came to the NBA only two years later, first proving himself to be a star in Europe. Back there, he signed his first professional contract when he was 17 with Atla Basketball Club from Belgrade, Serbia. Peck played seven years in Europe and this is what he managed to achieve, even becoming an Euroleague champion in 2009 with Panathinaikos Athens. And when in 2010 Pekovic decided to move his talents to Minnesota, even his own teammates were scared of him. A few months with the team and everybody in the Wolves organization knew what Pekovic was all about. The team's forward Michael Beasley said that nobody has the guts to challenge Peck to a fight. And Kevin Love was quoted saying this, he wants to make friends with us before he knocks a few teeth out. We are just hoping it's the other team and not us. In 2019, Zach Lavine, who already played for the Bulls at the time, admitted that when he joined the Timberwolves as a rookie in 2014, he was terrified of Pekovic. Coming out of college, I was number 14. And I wanted to have that in the NBA and he had it. I didn't even feel like asking. Like, I wasn't even going to ask Pekovic for the number. I was terrified of him. Even the toughest and strongest NBA players hated playing against against this man. Just look at him toying around with DeMarcus Cousins. Here's Pekovic, good move on the low block. A three-time defensive player of the year, Dwight Howard, went as far as saying Pekovic should fight in the MMA. Oh, he was one of the strongest guys like I ever played against. And he was crazy strong. He used to do MMA. In 2020, Andre Drummond also remembered Nikola Pekovic, saying he's the strongest human Andre has ever played against. Drummond admitted that he felt like a kid when playing against Peck and that the Montenegrin would push him around. He's the reason I started lifting harder, Drummond revealed. Pekovic was so terrifying that his opponents tried to make sure Peck didn't get into a fight with them. Things got a little intense here between these two teams. Danny Granger gets the rebound and then gets in the face of Kevin Love. Granger gets the technical foul, Love a personal foul. When this altercation between Danny Granger and Kevin Love happened, after the game, Pacers guard Dante Jones revealed that in the heat of the moment, he immediately tried to approach Peck and tell him that they don't want to mess with him. Even if it was in a joking manner, this says a lot about Pekovic's terrifying stature. Now, I can actually understand why big grown men were terrified by this guy. Especially since every time Pekovic Pekovic spoke, it was comical and frightening at the same time. About being out there on the court. Hitting people. <laughs> What's your favorite holiday meal? Yes, meat is good. Don't get me wrong, in his NBA days, Pekovic wasn't a player who would often get into arguments or the one who always wanted to fight. But at the same time, if Peck decided he wanted to bully somebody, nobody could do anything about it. I mean nobody even the refs. Pekovic sets the screen not once but twice for Borea. He takes advantage with the triple. Borea 
Pekovic was such a quote-unquote gangster that the Timberwolves started playing Godfather music when he scored. Can you guess what his favorite movie was? Yep, The Godfather. Once when Peck was asked what he would do if he had a time machine, the Montenegrin giant said he would go back a couple of hundred years to the times when people used swords. I can already imagine Pekovic in a Game of Thrones battle scene. His tattoos also suggest he would definitely be that guy on the front line. What is that? that guy, he looks like a, a mighty warrior of sorts. Who's, who's... Yeah, I like warriors. That's how I like. It's the one on your leg. It's same. Same warrior. Do they hurt? Yeah. Unfortunately, his career was cut short due to injuries. In 2014-2015 season, Pekovic played 31 games and in 2015-2016 only 12 games, before the pain from ankle and Achilles derailed his season. He was also ruled out for the entire 2016-2017 season. Pekovic admitted he cannot run without pain and is considering retirement due to mental exhaustion and pain. In 2017, he was waived by the Wolves and never played a professional game of basketball again. That's where we get into his real-life gangster stuff. Even during his playing days, Peck was rumored to be connected to some people with questionable or downright bad reputations. But when he retired, all his links to criminals became public information. Peck went back to Serbia, Belgrade and just months after his career was over, ran into problems with Serbian police. It was reported that police found drugs and weapons in an Audi with American license plates. Pekovic wasn't there, but the car was registered to his name. Two men who were in the car had close ties to big-time Balkan drug lords, brothers Darko and Dusko Šaric. One of the men in the car, Radojko Tomašević, was reported to be Pekovic's bodyguard. Of course, Pekovic himself was no stranger to the Sharij brothers. When Peck was called to testify and speak with the police officers, he admitted he is friends with infamous drug lords. It turns out Pekovic is also a godfather of Dusko Sharic's child. The Godfather. Oh, the irony. Talking to Serbian media in 2017, Peck stated that he met Dusko Sharic in 2014. When asked about his friend's criminal background, Peck stated, Why should it bother me to hang out with someone who has repeatedly shown how much of a friend he is to me? The former basketball star also explained he has no business interest with the drug lords, although in the media the information was different. It was reported that Pekovic owns a hotel and a nightclub that is also also linked to the infamous criminals. Then, in 2018, it was also reported that Pekovic repaid the debt of Dusko Šaric of more than 1 million euros to the bank. I just don't understand. Do drug lords really not have money to pay it themselves? Darko Šaric eventually was convicted for drug trafficking and money laundering, and Pekovic's friend Dusko Šaric just recently, on the 4th of January, surrendered to the Serbian police. He is also accused of being part of the criminal group of his brother, Darko Šaric. Let's be clear, there's no actual proof that Nikola Pekovic is a drug lord or any other kind of criminal back in Serbia. But it's no secret that people in Serbia or Montenegro talk about Pek as a mobster and not a former basketball star. What do you think about Pekovic's career and his post-basketball life? Is he the biggest gangster in NBA history or does someone else come to mind? Let us know in the comments, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more. See you in the next one.